In this video, we finally have the long-awaited patch 5.03 notes. What's going on, Pro Guides family? It's your host, Sergeant Frost. The clock is running down on Episode 5, Act 1, as this is most likely the last regularly scheduled patch for this act before Act 2 starts later this month. There are a few big changes in this week's patch, so we have a lot to get to. But before we jump in, just because the end of the act is approaching doesn't mean you still can't make a last-minute push to the rank of your desire. And that's why we have high-ranking coaches on ProGuides.com who are gladly here to help. The link to our website is in the description if you're interested. And now let's hop right into the patch rundown. Let's start off with the agent changes. A few weeks ago, we posted a PBE update video detailing several nerfs Chamber was poised to receive in the near future. Well, today, now that we have the official patch notes, we are here to say that every single one of those changes made it through to the live patch 5.03. Plus, there's another one that wasn't stated before. Let's look at all the new official Chamber changes. Starting off with Chambers E, Rendezvous. The base cooldown has been increased from 20 seconds to 30 seconds. The recall cooldown has been increased from 20 seconds to 30 seconds. The cooldown has been changed to 45 seconds whenever a Rendezvous anchor is destroyed. And finally, the diameter size of the ring Chamber can stand on that allows them to activate Rendezvous has been decreased from 21 meters to 15 meters. It's worth noting that Chamber's Rendezvous was intended to be powerful at holding space, but the generous radius allowed him to take space with more aggression than the devs intended. This change should require Chamber to exert more effort to access those off angles. And the devs hope that a harsher punishment for a destroyed rendezvous anchor and the reduced radius will demand Chamber mains to be more careful in their use. This change also brings the counterplay of Chamber's destructible objects more in line with the behavior of other destructible objects in the game. Moving on to his trademark, the slow duration on Chamber's trip has been decreased from 9.5 seconds to 6 seconds. This is a nice change to make the slow on his trademark still effective without feeling too oppressive to the enemy. For Chambers Tour de Force, the ultimate points have been increased from 7 to 8, and the slow duration has been decreased from 9.5 seconds to 6 seconds. Chambers ult is getting the same nerf as his trademark in terms of the slow effect, which is fair considering he gets a new slow field with every single kill he gets. And the ultimate point cost going up on Tour de Force is fine considering he gets the most powerful AWP in the game without any credit investment at all. For the final ability change to his Headhunter, Chambers bullet cost has been increased from 100 credits per bullet up to 150 now. This is a fair change that makes Chamber players think twice before constantly buying bullets for this thing every round. From a dev perspective, Chamber's Deagle is a powerful sidearm pistol, but at its current price point, Chamber doesn't have to partake in any difficult economic decisions before blindly buying new bullets every round. This change is just trying to get Chambers to think twice before reloading his headhunter with new bullets every round. A new system is being added into the game that also appeared on the PBE recently, and that is a new regional damage breakup system for Asian's ultimates. According to the devs, they are updating the ultimates for the following agents so that they follow similar regional damage rules to the weapons where hitting the heads and legs of enemies applies different damage multipliers. The intent is to reward precision and create intuitive consistency across damage and Valorant for more agents and Neon in specific. It also gives the devs more tuning levers for balancing her across different skill levels. This change should also add depth to the mastery needed when tracking while sprinting that her ult demands. For Neon's overdrive, the damage per shot has been reduced from 22 to 18. The kill zone has been increased from 15 meters to 20 meters, the leg shot multiplier has been reduced from 1.0 to 0.85, and the headshot multiplier has been increased from 1 to 3. All these changes should make Neon's ultimate more consistent feeling with the damage it applies in different zones, and it should overall make her ult feel more powerful to use if you are skilled with it in the first place. For Chambers Tour de Force, the leg shot multiplier has been reduced from 1.0 to 0.85. For Jet, the leg shot multiplier has also been reduced from 1.0 to 0.85. We have some pretty big news from the devs in terms of general updates this patch, as they have detailed some new changes on the updates to the game's Unreal Game Engine. The devs are updating the game's game engine to the Unreal Engine 4.26. According to the dev's statement, this update improves the toolset available to the developers in many ways. However, this change will likely go unnoticed by most players, as the goal of any engine update is to happen under the radar. There are some known issues this time around though, mostly the UI is misbehaving. The devs have stated that they are fixing this as quickly as they can, but you can expect some funkiness in the game and in the main menu. If anything interrupts your gameplay, please submit a bug report. This is some pretty substantial news, as updating the game's engine to keep it up with the times is huge and it will affect our gameplay in more ways than we can imagine. And this is great overall for the players as it should improve our overall game experience. For our final general update, the devs are giving the agent select screen a visual design update with new animations and artwork. The devs have stated that this should leverage some of the cool agent art and lean more into the Valorant art style. In gameplay system updates, the devs have added the ability to change the ghost keybind outside of custom games. This option is listed under settings, then controls, then actions. 
Now let's move into bug fixes. In Agent Bug Fixes, the devs have fixed an issue with Jet's Tailwind where switching weapons in the middle of the dash would cause the weapon pullout animation to take longer than desired. In Game System Bug Fixes, the devs have fixed a bug where some Reyna Killjoy HUD elements were still visible after enabling Hide User Interface. The devs have also addressed a bug where the Diffuse animation wouldn't consistently play if the orb is tapped in rapid succession. Now, wrapping up the video with known issues, the devs are aware that changing crosshair opacity settings in-game causes crosshair preview visuals to flicker. They also are aware of spike announcement UI displaying incorrectly. And that is all for this patch 5.03 patch rundown. If you enjoyed the video, then be sure to drop a like and consider subscribing to our channel. Also, don't forget to check out ProGuides.com to gain some access to some truly amazing coaching. This has been your host, Sergeant Frost, and good luck on the grind for the rest of this act.